Hey everybody, my name is Grimace. You're watching The Bespoke Woodsman. On this channel, I talk about hiking, backpacking, backpacking gear. If those kinds of things interest you, click subscribe, click the notification bell. I'd love to have you along with. Uh, this week, I am planning a trip to Sequoia Kings Canyon National Park for a 4th of July getaway. So hopefully the permits go through. I'm putting together a group. If you saw my goals for 2020 video, then you'll know that I was I made it a goal coming into 2020 to hike with, pe with people more often because I usually do so many solo trips. Um, this is going to be that trip. So I've got a group of people I'm talking to, at least one or two, I feel really secure that we're gonna be going out together. So, one of the interesting things is because it's people of all different skill levels, I've been talking a lot to them about gear and specifically about clothing. And it's brought up a lot of like my anxieties when I first began backpacking. Food and clothing were the two things that like really freaked me out. I just had so much trouble wrapping my head around it. Like how many spare shirts do I bring? How many pairs of underwear do I bring? Those sorts of things. And that really kind of held true until I discovered a guy named Andrew Skirka. Andrew is an adventurer. He's a long distance hiker. He's an endurance athlete. He's a marathoner. Andrew uh, did the Sea to Sea route, which is an 8,000 mile from uh, 8,000 mile trek from Quebec to the Olympic Peninsula in Washington. Um, he's a blogger, he's a speaker, he's a guide, He does. All, he's amazing, and he's one of my backpacking heroes, and he invented a system called the Core 13 Ultralight Backpacking Clothing System. I don't know if Ultralight is in there, but the Core 13 Backpacking Clothing System, and what this is, is it's literally 13 pieces of clothing that you mix and match. You don't take all 13 on any individual trip or you could, but you usually wouldn't. And you mix and match these pieces and together they give you a system to get you through any uh, three season backpacking trip. So not winter, not if there's snow or ice or sleet, those sorts of things, but a three season trip, 13 pieces that will get you through anything you'll experience on a three season trip. So it's really great and it's really simple and it'll save you a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of effort and it'll keep you from overthinking things. And you might be thinking, oh, well, how do I know which of the 13 pieces to bring? And the truth is, so in the ultralight community, in the lightweight community, in the, in the reduced weight backpacking community, we have a thing that's called packing your fears. What that means is a lot of us pack sort of for those what if scenarios. And the truth is, A, they're unlikely to happen, and B, um, you're unlikely to really be able to do anything about them if you can. So you're carrying all of this added weight that you don't really need. And especially for most of us, if it's going to be a weekend or an overnight or even like a five-day trip, like we've got a weather forecast. So we know what's coming. We know the general terrain we're going to be in. We know if we're going to be on trail or off. We know if it's going to be hot or cold at night or during the day. We know if there's going to be shade or relief. And we know this by checking our maps, by checking guidebooks, by checking the internet, by, by checking the weather reports. So we know all of these things. We do a little bit of research ahead of time, and then that saves us a lot of weight in the pack. So I've got here a pile of my Core 13. Um, first thing you need to know is that footwear is not included. Uh, socks, shoes, gaiters, those sorts of things, those are not included in the Core 13. So if you get 15 miles into the backcountry and realize that you are barefoot, do not come looking for me because I warned you. Uh, headwear, accessories like glasses, sunglasses, watches, gloves, mittens, those sorts of things are not included. Um, this is solely three season pieces for your torso and your uh, glutes, legs area. So um, again, 13 items, no footwear, no headwear, no accessories. The first piece we're gonna talk about is a short sleeve shirt. So our short sleeve shirt, we want to either be a lightweight merino wool or polyester. Uh, we no longer wear cotton anything. No cotton. Cotton uh, res absorbs moisture. It takes forever to dry out. Uh, there's an expression, cotton kills, and there's a reason for that. Like, it's just not a good fabric for outdoors adventuring. So what we're looking at is polyester or merino wool. Why those two things? Uh, because they mo they manage moisture very well. They wick very well. Um, they tend to be lightweight, breathable fabrics. Um, and then the other things that we want in this, 
Also, they manage odor very well. The other th the features that we want are a collar to kind of keep sun off of our neck. We don't want a crew neck if at all possible. And then some sort of ventilation like buttons or a zip is very good in your short sleeve shirt as well. Obviously, your sleeves are going to be short. We like it to be a little longer in the torso just because then it doesn't ride up when we're, when we're wearing a backpack, which we are likely to be doing in our backpacking scenarios. Uh, which brings us to item number two, a long sleeve shirt. Again, many of the same features. We want uh, either a polyester blend or a light merino wool. We want some sort of collar uh, to keep sun off of our necks as much as possible. We want some sort of venting, whether it's a zipper or buttons. The only real difference between a short sleeve shirt and a long sleeve shirt is the length of the sleeves. Now, why would we wear a long sleeve shirt instead of a short sleeve shirt? Good question. I typically wear a long sleeve shirt because I'm in California. There's a lot of sun. It doesn't really let up. And so rather than constantly slathering on sunblock um, and then carrying all of that sunblock, I would you just rather use clothing to sort of cover up. So that's a good reason. If it's going to be a little colder, might be another reason. Um, you know, it, it's kind of personal preference. I would wear a short sleeve shirt. I do wear a short sleeve shirt on some trips, depending on, you know, my exertion level, depending on how much sun exposure there's going to be, depending on how much bug pressure there's going to be, which brings us to the bug shirt. So this shirt is literally to keep bugs from biting us. Um, because of that, it's gonna be a tighter weave than we want in our normal hiking shirts, just so the bugs can't get through. It's gonna close at the collar. It's going to close at the sleeves very as, as tightly as possible. We're just trying to, to limit access. I like something with a placket that uh, is separate uh, to kind of just give us more protection. There are two ways that you can protect yourself from bugs. The first is literally just body armor, like structure, like having this piece that's really heavy, that bugs can't get through. Uh, and then the second thing is chemistry. Most of the time that means a permethrin treatment. So this shirt is not technically a bug shirt. Oh, there are shirts you can buy that are pre-treated with permethrin. Um, Ex officio has many of them. Bugs Away has a lot of them. Um, and so literally they are shirts that are, that are treated with permethrin. So is this, but I treated it myself. You can also send a shirt, if you've got a shirt you really like already that covers you up really well, you can send it away to a company called Insect Shield and they will treat it for you. So there are lots of ways to sort of accomplish this. You can either get a dedicated bug shirt or you can alter something that you already own. I do like to keep it separate from my normal backpacking attire solely because um, we really want something more breathable whenever we can get it, something that wicks a little bit better, something that isn't so tightly woven uh, when we can get away with it and reserve this shirt for when there is heavy bug pressure. The next piece, for better or worse, has sort of become part of the standard uh, ultralight uniform, if you will. It's something that a lot of people see and they know immediately that you're a lightweight backpacker, and that is running shorts. So what's the deal with lightweight backpackers and running shorts anyway? Is it that they're so lightweight? Is it that they are going to scare everyone else off the trail? It's nothing like that, honestly. So many of the ultralighters are originally endurance athletes, marathoners, runners. That's part of it. But there are many advantages to running shorts that make them superior over hiking pants. As long as you're not bushwhacking, as long as you're not in intense sun with no relief, no shade, and as long as there's not heavy bug pressure or like brush, then, you know, running shorts can, they give you, because they're so short, they give you added uh, movement, mobility. They have great ventilation. They're literally built to wick moisture because they're built for runners. So they're gonna release a lot of your body heat very easily. They're going to dry very quickly if you need to ford a river or something like that. And they also have a dedicated liner. So it's just one fewer thing to worry about. You don't have to worry about underpants uh, bringing those along with you. So in many ways, they just really are superior. Now, if you are the kind of a person who, you know, wants a little added modesty, so you'd rather get maybe something at the knee or a little above the knee, it's going to restrict your movement a little bit. But, you know, for the sake of modesty, it's probably a decent trade-off for you. So that brings us to hiking pants. 
So hiking pants are gonna be a better choice if you have more brush coverage, more bug pressure, more intense sun. Uh, so they're gonna they're gonna wet faster. They're going to lose moisture slower. They're not going to give you the freedom of movement that running shorts are gonna have. They're not gonna have the ventilation that running shorts have. They're not gonna have a dedicated liner, but they will give you added coverage. So it is really more about protection. What's great in a hiking pant? To be honest with you, there are not many great hiking pants. I wear these Prana Bryans. These are probably the best ones I have gotten so far. Uh, I like the cut. They're straight. They stretch really well. It's a great fabric. They feel really nice. Um, so far, so good on the protection. But, you know, your mileage may vary. So if you're using a hiking pant instead of a running short, of course, you're going to need the sixth item, which is <clears throat> underpants. Um, Ex officio makes great underpants. Sacks. Uh, sport mesh is really good. Any number of under armor or running underpants, running underwear will be really great. Um, this is something, again, you don't want cotton. You want something that is a performance material. Uh, like I said, like an under armor or something like that. It, keep it simple. Bring one pair, something that, that's going to manage odor pretty well, like a polyester should be fine. Even a merino wool. Those should all work really well. You don't need to overthink this. It's underpants. The seventh item is going to be a fleece top. Now this is not a heavy fleece layer that we're gonna use as an insulating layer because we're gonna talk about that later. We've got more efficient ways to insulate. This is a mid layer or a second layer. So you're either gonna wear it over your shirt and under a shell or solely over your shirt for when you're hiking. Uh, you're gonna want zip or buttons or some way to regulate temperature. Ideally, this layer will have a hood uh, this fleece top will have a hood. This is a Patagonia R1. One piece of advice here is do not break the bank. There are a lot of reasonably priced, uh, Old Navy has a, a, a gridded fleece, like a micro grid fleece. This is all we're looking for. This is a piece, it doesn't do a lot by itself, but as a layering piece, it's really king. It can prevent wind from getting in, but it also allows heat out. The grid fleece in particular does a really good job of isolating heat, sort of baffling in a way. Um, this is just a really versatile piece, a versatile layer that you should absolutely have. And it's the final part of what we call our go suit. The seven items we've talked about so far, that's our go suit. That is our basically our backpacking uniform. We wear it every single day we're out, some variation, some combination of those things. So everything else we'll talk about has certain functions, but these pieces are your go suit. And so your go suit is, like I said, it's something you're gonna wear every single day we're not going to bring spares. We're not going to bring spare underwear. We're not going to bring spare shirts. And the reason is if it starts to stink, if it starts to get a little musty, that's okay. First of all, it's unlikely that we're going to be out that long on a trip, you know, one night, three nights, five nights, something like that. And if it gets super dirty, super offensive, first of all, we've been choosing fabrics that manage odor very well. But if it does get offensive, we wash it. When we get to camp, we just clean it. It's the oldest uh, uh, activity in the world, cleaning clothes in a river, in a lake, like using water to clean clothes. So if it gets so bad that we need to wash it, we do. Our eighth piece is an insulating layer. So this is probably going to be down. It may be synthetic, uh, but it is specifically an insulating layer. Reason we want down or synthetic rather than a heavy fleece is that this is a lighter way to get more heat. It's more thermally efficient. So this is what we call our stop piece. What that means is we don't traditionally hike in this because then if we sweat and it gets wet, down takes forever to dry out. It loses its thermal properties while it's wet. Even synthetic, it's warmer. It doesn't completely lose its thermal properties, but that's not a piece we want to get wet if we can avoid it. Listen, if we need to wear it while we're hiking, we wear it while we're hiking. But traditionally speaking, this is the piece we put on when we get to camp, when we need to warm up, when we're in our sleeping bag and it's cold. This is that piece. Um, so this is, again, just a thermal piece. It's in our stop layer. The other piece, which is the, nine, the number nine piece, I don't even own, and that's insulated pants. I've never needed them. I've never bought them. Um, there are not a lot of great ones on the market. I know Mont Bell makes one. There are a few options. If you really want an insulated pant piece, like if you don't hike in Southern California, for instance, and you hike where it does get cold at night, 
I would encourage you to check out, they have, I think they're called M85 pants liners. That's a military surplus piece. I'll put it in the description below. I'm going to talk about all of these pieces in the, in the description below. Look into that. I don't have any personal experience, but everyone I've talked to who's used them really enjoys them. We've talked about our go suit. We've talked about our stop suit. What we haven't talked about yet is our storm suit. So the next piece is actually a rain jacket. I have a video discussing rain gear, rain jackets specifically. Um, this is a piece that we want to size it so that it fits over our other layers. Um, but this is a piece that's going to keep us dry when it's wet outside, when we're hiking in the rain, when we're camping in the rain. This is a really important piece. I usually bring a lighter jacket on all of my trips. Uh, some people don't. If there's not weather in the forecast, if it's 0%, I still like to bring even just my Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer. It packs down super small, super light. I just throw it in the bottom of my pack. But if the forecast, as we're getting closer and closer to the trip, if it calls for rain, I'll bring something like this Rab Kinetic that's just a little more robust, a little built, built to be lived in a little bit more. Uh, but just having some sort of emergency uh, situation is good. I'm going to say that these, this piece and the next piece, which we'll talk about in a second, can be swapped out for either an umbrella or a poncho, like a frog togs poncho, something like that. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with those, but if it's not gonna be too gusty, like too windy, if you're not gonna be doing a lot of bushwhacking, consider maybe an umbrella. A lot of people really like hiking umbrellas. It's not my style, it's not my scene, but uh, it might be yours. So look into that also. The 11th of the 13 pieces then is rain pants. Rain pants are something you're gonna bring when the forecast calls for rain, you're expecting to get inundated. These are the pants I wish I'd had on the Trans Catalina Trail. But like the jacket, these are made, usually made from a waterproof breathable fabric. So what that means is because hiking is a high, uh, endurance sport, uh, we're putting off a lot of heat. So we need that sweat to evaporate. We need that moisture to wick so that we don't get wet inside. Meanwhile, we need rain to not come in. So it needs to be waterproof. So it needs to let water out, but not in. On a long enough timeline, every rain jacket will fail. Every single one. Uh, it's just a matter of how long until it does, but it's going to lose that finish. Something is either going to wet out from inside, outside, or both. So it's just something to think about. Um, that's why we talk about like getting the ventilation of an umbrella or a poncho, something like that. Personally, I don't have those. I think investing in some hiking pants or some rain pants, some rain jackets, that's going to that's gonna get you through most three-season conditions. But if you live somewhere where it's really rainy, it's something to consider. So that leaves two pieces, and that is our sleep system, our sleep clothes. And that is literally just a top and a bottom. Do not overthink these. Don't buy a piece of uh, clothing to sleep in at night. Don't buy something really super nice. Don't pack along something nice. Just something lightweight, comfortable, something from home. Um, your sleep bottoms are usually going to be boxer briefs or running tights, something like that. Just a lightweight t-shirt. I use this Task Carrollton, uh, Task Performance Carrollton short sleeve shirt. These are literally just to sleep in. So these are not for camp. These are not for anything, but literally when you are in your sleeping bag or your quilt at the end of the day, I don't bring sleep clothes on most trips. When would you bring sleep clothes? When it's wet outside, whether that's rain, whether that's humidity, if there's not a lot of sun so that your, your clothes stay wet after you've hiked in them and they don't really dry off. That's when you want to be able to get those off Hang those up, let those dry while you sleep in nice, warm, uh, dry clothing. So when you get into your quilt or your sleeping bag, you're, you're not wet and clammy and getting your down wet and, and sort of ruining that experience. So these are really just a piece for when you need to sleep and you can't do it in the clothes that you normally hike in or you don't feel comfortable doing it in the nude, which is another option. So that's it. That's the core 13. 13 pieces of clothing that when mixed and matched will get you through almost any three season backpacking adventure. Um, as long as you're paying attention to where you're hiking, what the conditions are, what the weather is going to be like. 
this is this system saved me so much time, so much money, so much effort. Uh, I really wish I had discovered it earlier because I did cycle through a lot of things, really trying to figure out what my system was going to be. So hope that helps you. If you got any value, please click thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, click thumbs down. Leave a comment below if there's an article of clothing that Andrew Skirka missed or that I missed that you always bring or that you think is useful on a trip because I'm always trying to learn. Um, again, it doesn't include footwear, which we'll talk about maybe in another in another video. But these are the Core 13. Hope you learned a lot. I know I did when I first found out about it. Happen to answer any questions as best I can. My name is Grimace. You're watching The Bespoke Woodsman. On this channel, I talk about hiking, backpacking, backpacking gear. If those kinds of things interest you, please click subscribe. Please click that notification bell. Um, listen, I really appreciate you watching. I'm excited to keep putting out more great content. Let me know in the content comments if there's anything you want to see. And hey, let's do this again sometime.